In this video, we're going to take a look at bonding and metals, and we're also going to use that structure of bonding and metals to explain some of their characteristic properties. So let's start with what is a metallic bond? Well, in metals, uh, so for example, metals like iron, like magnesium, and so on and so forth, any metals on the periodic table, they have a pretty unique structure where the metal um, ion forms this sort of lattice kind of structure and the electrons associated with the metal are all sort of in between the metal ions. And so it can creates this continuous and compact structure where the valence electrons are loosely held. So we say that these electrons are delocalized. All right, so they are delocalized electrons. Um, so basically the bonding in a metal is electrostatic in nature because you have these positively charged metal ions and you have this sea of delocalized electrons between it. So a metallic bond itself is decently strong, but it's non-directional. Uh, so uh, it doesn't form the nice sort of crystal lattice structure like an ionic bond does. And in terms of some other properties, they're shiny, they're silvery, um, and that's because these valence electrons can absorb and emit light. They're also really flexible and good conductors, and that's because of the delocalized electrons. They are free to move in between the metal ions, so they make really, really good conductors. Now, if we were to look at melting points of metals, we can actually explain melting points of metals with the structure of this metallic bond. Uh, so melting points increase with increasing ionic charge. And so if we take a look at, for example, a plus two ion, so something like a magnesium ion versus a sodium ion or a plus one. So this one's plus two and this one's plus one. Uh, what that means is that the electrostatic attraction between the ions and the delocalized electrons are stronger in the plus two. So that's going to have a higher melting point. Uh, melting points also increase with decreasing ionic radius. So for example, an Mg2 plus ion, so an Mg2 plus ion is, has a smaller radius than a sodium plus ion. So that means that the delocalized electrons in the magnesium ion are gonna be closer to the positive ion. So they're gonna be more strongly attracted, meaning that the magnesium two plus ions going to have a higher melting point than the larger sodium plus ion would. Finally, melting points will increase with the increasing number of delocalized electrons. Um, and so we have stronger electrostatic attraction with more electrons. And kind of taking a look here in, in our pictures, our aluminum is going to have more delocalized electrons than either of the two. So alum and an aluminum metal would have a higher melting point than either magnesium or sodium. Now there are some other physical properties of metals that are important as well. So they're lustrous, which means uh, basically just shiny, especially when they are first cut. They are good conductors of electricity, and that's due to those delocalized electrons that are able to move freely in the solid metal. They are good conductors of heat as well as well as being ductile and malleable. So ductile meaning able to be drawn into wires um, and then malleable means hammered into shape. And just kind of taking a look um, in terms of the malleable, if we have a metal here sort of drawn as this lattice, you can picture all the electrons between it. Uh, because the bond itself is non-directional, 
there's a bit more fluidity in terms of what you can do with it. So if you draw it through a wire, you can, you can draw a metal through a wire. But you couldn't do that if you tried to do it with, say, an ionic compound, which uh, has a very strong directional bonding to it. Um, if, in terms of malleability, if you apply a force here, so you can kind of picture your hammer here, and you hit that metal, um, the layers can actually shift on top of and beneath itself. So it's able to move like that because of this non-directionality of bonding um, without uh, destroying any, I guess, of the other properties or, or um, being brittle or falling apart like an ionic compound would. Now you can also have something called alloys. So alloys are really homogeneous mixtures of two or more metals. Um, or they could be of a metal with a non-metal as well. Alloys themselves tend to be stronger and stiffer than pure metals. Uh, they often combine the desirable properties of the different metals involved. So. These are just a few examples of some of the different alloys that are available and what sort of metals make up those alloys. So for example, bronze is made up of a mixture of copper and tin, brass is copper and zinc, and so on. You don't really need to know any sort of specific examples of alloys, but um, kind of interesting to see the different sort of mixtures here. Cast iron is a great example of a metal with a non-metal because you have iron mixed with carbon, which makes it very, very strong. Now, why is it that if you have an alloy um, that it's stronger than just the metal itself? Well, if we go back to our picture on malleability and we look at, for example, a pure metal, then a pure metal, when we hit it with a hammer, it's easy for those layers of metal atoms to just slide right over each other. So these ones are going to slide over these ones here. If, though, we have a mixture where we have a differently sized atom, like this red one shown here, in that mixture of all of those other different types of metal atoms, it's going to prevent those planes of metal atoms from sliding over each other. So if you hit it with the same force, you're not going to get the same kind of sliding, uh, which then makes the alloy version of it stronger than just the pure metal counterpart. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of metallic bonds and some of the characteristic properties of metals. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.